Lawrence Yates here, and I'm going to walk you through the features of my new script for After Effects called QuickDraw. This can be run as a floating dialogue or as a dockable panel. To install it as a dockable panel, you'll need to copy it to your script UI folder, which on Mac is under Applications, Adobe After Effects, and whatever version it is, Scripts, Script UI Panels. The path on Windows is much the same, but in your program files instead of the Applications folder. You'll have to restart After Effects, but when it's up and running, it'll be available under the Window menu. So what does it do? QuickDraw sets keyframes on brush strokes, so I'm going to have to draw over my text or artwork to create a mat that QuickDraw can animate. That part doesn't happen automatically, but I find this is a much faster process than drawing individual masks to use with, say, the Generate Stroke effect. It also gives me a lot more control with the timing of strokes, which I'll demonstrate now. First thing you should know about the paint effect in After Effects is that it won't let you draw on a text layer or a vector layer with the constant rasterize asterisk checked. It just won't open the layer viewer for layers of this type. So in this example, I'm going to pre-comp my text, select the paintbrush tool, and double click to start drawing on my pre-comp. First thing you'll notice is that my black text isn't showing against the black background. This is the background colour of my composition, and I can change that in my comp settings. Now, because Photoshop documents are imported with a black background by default, and because I'm a little bit lazy, I added a white background button to change the background colour from the quick draw panel. Check the paint panel to make sure the duration is set to constant. Play around with write on option and you'll quickly see why I prefer to draw first and animate later. Depending on what I'm tracing and the paint colour, I like to set my blend mode to luminosity or multiply. It doesn't make a difference to the final track map, but can make it easier to see what you're tracing over at this stage. If you're using a Cintiq or graphics tablet, you can use the brush pressure to do calligraphic strokes or set a constant size. I make sure my hardness and spacing settings are set to 100% and 1% so that my track mat doesn't have furry edges. So now it's a matter of tracing the text in the order that I want it to appear. There's flexibility to change that later, but it depends on how the strokes overlap as to whether they're going to look any good if used to reveal the text in a different sequence. Back to the composition viewer and I can start animating the paint effect. Hitting PP displays all the paint strokes in the timeline. You can see that because I had the playhead at 2 seconds, the strokes are only visible from this point. You can drag out the individual in point, but once I start using QuickDraw, you'll see that it will adjust the in and out points for the strokes to match your layer in and out points. Starting with the Keyframes tab in QuickDraw, the basic keyframer will animate each stroke over the same amount of time and by default cues them back to back. If I change this to 10 frames and hit Animate Strokes, you can see the identical keyframes have been set for each stroke. 10 frames apart, and they start one after the other at 10 frame intervals. A couple of markers are set on the layer, so I don't need to twirl down to the brushes to see where the keyframes start and end. This is fine for text if I use a single stroke for each character but it doesn't take into account short strokes for dotting the I's and crossing the T's or allowing more time for longer strokes. I can of course make these changes manually by finding the dots on the I's and move the keyframes a bit. Then using the sequence function, I can stack the keyframes back to back again without having to manually shuffle things around. I can overlap strokes or add padding here with a negative number. Or if I want each stroke to start drawing on every five frames, say, no matter how long each stroke takes, the stagger function will also move the existing keyframes around. By default, keyframes are set from the in point of the layer, but you can check the first keyframe at playhead checkbox to set keyframes from anywhere on the timeline. The settings at the top of the panel apply for pretty much all the keyframe functions in QuickDraw. From the top, you can filter between brushes and erases. This is based on the stroke name, so if I rename the strokes, this filter won't work. We've just covered the first keyframe at Playhead. Selected strokes only. I can select strokes either in the timeline or from the layer viewer. 
any keyframing functions will only run on the selected keyframes, which can help with timing for revealing portions of an image to match voiceover or music. Reverse Stroke Order does exactly that, sequencing the strokes from top to bottom, which is the reverse order of how they're drawn on. If I skip over to the Buttons panel, this is where I can take my animated strokes and use them to reveal my source layer. The Layer Matte button will duplicate the layer, setting the paint effect to Paint on Transparent and clearing the paint effect from the original layer. The duplicate is then set as a track matte for the original, which defines the alpha or visibility. The duplicate is also parented to the original, so you can animate its position, rotation and scale, even while the strokes are animating. Alternatively, you can use the Effects Matte button to create a stack of effects on your layer that generates a Reveal Source effect. The effects have been renamed so that QuickDraw knows whether they've already been applied, but if you want to play around with this method, the Define Alpha effect uses Compound Arithmetic, and the Define RGB uses CC Composite. From the Buttons panel, I can also clear all the keyframes, leaving all the strokes at either 0%, or 100% drawn on. Use select keyframes to highlight the keyframes on the currently selected strokes, but you'll need selected strokes only selected as well. This is handy for grabbing a bunch of keyframes and shifting them around or scaling them on the timeline. Stepping back now to the measured tab, the functions of this tab measure the length of each stroke and set the durations based on the stroke length. By default, stroke length are measured by the number of vertices on the path, but for a more accurate measurement, particularly for any strokes with snapped straight lines, the high accuracy setting will measure the total distances between the vertices in the path. I can specify that I want all these strokes to draw on over, say, 250 frames. The first pass takes the stroke measurements, and the second pass sets the keyframes over the 250 frames with individual durations proportionate to the stroke length. The stroke measurements are written into the stroke name, so that to run the same process and change the overall duration to say 300 frames, the strokes do not need to be measured again. The pace at which these strokes were drawn on is determined, and I can use this to then animate other strokes at the same speed. Changing to high accuracy mode will give a very different scale of pace, and as one is calculated based on the vertices over time and the other is stroke length over time, they're not interchangeable. To make setting the total duration quick and easy, I can move the timeline to where I want the strokes to start and hit in and do the same for the out point and then hit go. And that about covers it. Thanks for listening and I hope you enjoy working with QuickDraw. <laughs>